Hey everybody, we are going to be looking at some of those passages in chapter 8 that I didn't talk about in the sermon on chapter 8. And the reason I didn't talk about them in the sermon is because uh, I address some of the same points that come from these passages in different sermons, or uh, because it wasn't necessarily the main point of the overall passage and I thought maybe it would be a little bit of a distraction. And, and so I, I'm making this video to kind of highlight those. Uh, if you, we look, and the first of those passages is at the very beginning of, this, of the chapter, verses 1 through 4. It says, When he, being Jesus, came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. And right away a man with leprosy came up and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Reaching out his hand, Jesus touched him, saying, I am willing, be made clean. And immediately his leprosy cleansed him, or uh, was cleansed. Here's what's interesting. Then Jesus told him, See that you don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Two things happening here that I think are really fascinating. First, Jesus points back to the law of Moses. And, you know, Jesus never goes against the law of Moses. He always fulfills the law of Moses. The law in Scripture, he always points back to and reaffirms. He never breaks it. Well, he breaks his traditions. He breaks traditions all the time. All of the traditional applications of the law, he busts right through those. However, the law itself, he is always true to it. And here, he points back to the law of Moses and said, you need to go show yourself to the priest. That's what the law requires. Um, so that, that's the first thing. The second thing that is really fascinating is that he uh, says, uh, don't tell anyone, right? Don't, don't tell anyone. Go show yourself to the priest, but don't, don't spread the word about the fact that I healed you. There's a lot of theories on this, a lot of theories. Uh, the theory that I hold to, and, and this is not just this person. This happens quite a bit, and, and I break this down a, a little bit in Chapter 9, where I think it's a little bit more uh, of the main takeaway, uh, the, the second part of Chapter 9, um, or no, first part of Chapter 9. Um, and what, uh, what, what my theory is, is that when Jesus says, don't tell anyone, that person is going to go and just talk about his healing. Talk about how great his healing is, how wonderful his healing is. Versus talking about how Jesus is the Messiah, come to save, that he is made whole. You see, Jesus' ministry is about making people whole, both physically, but mainly spiritually. And when the physical wellness becomes the main message, that's a distraction from who Jesus is. And so I think that is the, the chief reason. That's my theory, the chief reason where sometimes Jesus says, don't, don't go tell anyone. And uh, I'll unpack that again in chapter 9 in, in that sermon. Uh, the, the second passage that, that I skipped in chapter 8 is verses 14 through 17. And so here's what that passage says. In, in verse 14, it says, Jesus went into Peter's house and saw his mother-in-law lying in the bed with a fever. So he touched her hand and the fever left her. Then she got up and began to serve him. When evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he drew out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, so that what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. He himself took our weaknesses and carried our diseases. Yeah, a couple things I want to hit here. First, well, what a great testimony. Peter's mother gets healed, and instead of making it all about her, immediately comes and makes it all about Jesus, begins to serve Jesus. A great testimony for all of us. Uh, the second thing, talking about how this is fulfilling the prophet Isaiah, all the healings that Jesus does, it's not primarily to heal, it's primarily to show that Jesus has authority, that, that Jesus is who he says he is. He is the Messiah that was prophesied through Isaiah. Finally, the last thing on this whole passage I want to talk about is just an interesting thing, and that is in verse 14, it says, when, Peter went into Peter, when Jesus went to Peter's house and saw his mother-in-law, the person who gets healed here is Peter's mother-in-law. This is a difficult passage historically because in order for Peter to have a mother-in-law, he needs to have a wife. And uh, this is the accurate translation of this, uh, according to the manuscripts that we have, the oldest manuscripts that we have. So this is tricky because the Catholic Church believes that Peter was the first pope, the first priest of the church, and they also believe in a celibate priesthood, that all priests need to be married to the church. 
and or and and not have wives. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, priests had wives for a long time. Then they didn't have official wives. They had mistresses that they kept for a long time. They they had wives that they kept in the back. Didn't talk about. Uh, a lot of this had to do with inheritance and land and who owned all of these things. Um, but uh, the church banned this practice. And then they, they said this is always going to be the case. Uh, unfortunately, this, this passage completely undermines this for them in that Peter absolutely had a wife. And if he had a wife and they believe he was the first pope and the first priesthood, then it, it sets a precedent of a married priesthood, um, which I am thankful for. Uh, because I have a wonderful wife uh, that I'm married to. So um, that, that is an interesting point that comes out of this passage. Not at all one of the main things, uh, as the writer of this was not trying to anticipate uh, this this bad doctrine that would come later, but it's interesting that, that God put in this wordage to show us um, that, that indeed uh, that, that's not the truth. So um, just some interesting excerpts from the passage that I didn't get into the sermon itself. Uh, continue to study Matthew. Uh, continue to follow along as we glorify God and make more of him and less of us until there's only Jesus.